In this video, I'm gonna compare three very popular ETFs, BAS, IOZ, and A200. Let's get straight into it. These three funds are the three most popular ETFs that track the return of the Australian stock market. This means if you invest in one of these ETFs, you are essentially investing in the entire ASX. So if you're a new investor trying to decide between these three funds, then keep watching because we are about to stack them against each other in a few important categories. So the first category is, what does each of these funds track and what companies do they hold? Well, the short answer is IOZ and A200 tracks the top 200 companies on the ASX, whereas VAS tracks the top 300 companies on the ASX, which means it's a bit more diversified. The top 200 companies make up 88% of the entire Australian stock market and the top 300 makes up 93%. There are over 2,000 companies currently listed on the ASX and there is always more being added regularly. These small companies are much riskier for investors as the likelihood of them going bankrupt is much higher than the larger more established companies. So you are not really missing out by not investing in the remaining 10% of the ASX. In fact, you are reducing your risk by investing in the top 200 or 300 companies. This ensures that you are invested in the top companies at all times and any company that does not perform will be kicked out from the index and replaced with a better performing one. Both IOZ and A200 track the top 200 index. However, IOZ tracks the S&P 200 index, while A200 tracks the Solar Active Australia 200 index. VAS tracks the S&P 300, which just adds an extra 100 companies. It should be noted that the last 100 companies only make up about 3% of the entire holdings. And if we look at the top 10 holdings for each fund, they are identical except for the weighting. So performance-wise, all three should be very similar. In fact, let's move on to how each fund has performed over the years. As you can see from the table, we break down each ETF and their 3-year, 5-year and 10-year returns, as well as their returns since their inception date. Let's start with VAS. The 3-year return is 3.6%, the 5-year return is 7.01%, and the 10-year return is 9.3%. The inception date is 4th of May 2009. So the 13-year return since their inception is 8.55%, and the reason the 3-year return is lower than the rest is because we are currently in a bear market and the stock price is down about 13% year-to-date. This proves that when it comes to the stock market, long-term investing is the best way to go because more time means you give the market more time to recover and compound your gains. Alright, let's move on to IOZ. The 3 year return is 3.24%, the 5 year return is 6.69%, and the 10 year return is 9.04%. Their inception date is the 6th of December 2010. So their 12 year return since inception is 7.13%. As you can see, these returns are very similar to VAS. And interestingly, it seems VAS performed slightly better over a 3, 5 and 10 year period. This could be due to the extra 100 companies in the fund. Let's now check out A200. The 3 year return is 3.62%, and the 5 and 10 year return are not applicable because the fund only started on the 7th of May 2018. So it's only been a little over 4 years since the fund was created. The return since inception is 6.02%. The reason it's lower than both VAS and IOZ is because of the shorter time frame. As we already discussed, the longer a fund is given to grow, the better it should perform. Going forward, I would imagine all three funds would have very similar returns. Having said that, please note that past performances are not indicative of future results. Nothing is ever guaranteed when it comes to the stock market, but historically, in the long term, it does tend to perform well. Let's now move on to the management fees. The good news is all three funds have low cost fees, so it is a great way for everyday Aussies like you and I to invest into Australia's largest companies all at a relatively low cost. If you look at the table, you can see A200 is the cheapest out of the three at 0.07%. This could be because it's a newer fund, so they're trying to attract more investors. And the fact that it tracks the Solar Active Index rather than the S&P Index could mean it is a bit cheaper to run on their end. The next cheapest fee is IOZ at 0.09%. And then you have VAS, which is the most expensive, at 0.1%. For context, here is a table of what you would pay every $1,000 invested for each fund. With VAS, you will pay $1 per $1,000 invested. With IOZ, you will pay $0.90 cents for every $1,000 invested. And with A200, you will pay $0.70 cents per $1,000 invested. So really, the difference is negligible in the grand scheme of things. And you would be splitting hairs trying to find the cheapest fund. Also, just a disclaimer, I am not a financial advisor and the comments I make in this video are for entertainment purposes only. These are not buy recommendations. You should only use the information in this video to do your own research and make your own investment decisions. Also, just a small reminder that just because an ETF is considered safer than other investments, this does not mean it is risk-free. Past performances are never guaranteed, and just like any other asset class, ETFs are also vulnerable to market conditions. So with that out of the way, let's get back into it. Let's now talk about the ETF providers and their total asset size. This is very important because an ETF can be discontinued if there are not enough investors, so you want to stick with ETF providers with a long-standing reputation and with a certain amount of assets under management. The assets under management, or AUM for short, is the sum of the market value of all the investments managed by the fund. It represents how much investors have put their money into the fund. Technically speaking, the higher the AUM, the safer it is to invest into the fund. 
Let's just start off with BAS, which is run by Vanguard. Vanguard is a hugely popular American investment company founded in 1975. It has a great reputation in the finance and investing community and is seen as the gold standard in the industry. It is the second largest provider of ETFs in the world with over 10 trillion Australian dollars in global assets under management. The total assets under management for the VAS ETF is 10.4 billion Australian dollars. Next is IOZ, which is run by iShares, which is a collection of ETFs managed by BlackRock, which is another American investment company founded in 1988. Like Vanguard, they also have a very good reputation and are in fact the largest ETF providers in the world with over 14 trillion Australian dollars in global assets under management. The total assets under management for the IOZ ETF is 4.2 billion Australian dollars. And last but not least, A200 is run by BetaShares, which is an Australian investment company. The company was founded in 2009, so it is a bit newer than the other two providers. Nevertheless, BetaShares is a trusted provider in Australia with 22.5 billion Australian dollars in total assets under management. The total assets under management for the A200 ETF is 2.1 billion Australian dollars. So you can see that all three funds are backed by reputable providers and have a high assets under management, meaning it's trusted by many Australian investors. So you can rest assured that your investment is in good hands. Let's now look at the dividend yield for each fund. As you can see from the table, each fund provides similar dividend yields, with IOZ paying a bit more than VAS and A200. So you have VAS at 4.1%, IOZ at 4.44% and A200 at 3.5%. The dividend yield is the percentage of a company's share price that pays out in dividends each year. This is calculated by dividing the dividend per share by the current market price per share and multiplied by 100. So for example, if a company has a $50 share price and pays a dividend of $2 per year, the dividend yield will be 4%. You can find the dividend per share in the ETF's website under distributions. The Australian stock market is famous for paying out generous dividends. And with each of these ETFs having a large weighting in big Aussie companies like the big four banks, mining companies and supermarkets, there is plenty of profits to go around, meaning some of it will be passed on to the shareholders in the form of cash dividends. You should note that the dividend yield can be misleading at times, especially if the share price has gone down significantly in the past year. So don't just assume that a high dividend yield means it's a great investment. Always make sure you do your due diligence and know what you're investing in. The dividend distribution for all three funds is paid out quarterly. This means you will be paid four times a year if you invest in one of these funds. You can check on their website the dates that they are paid out. All three funds are domiciled in Australia, which means they are registered under the rules of the ASX. This enables you to set your own dividends, the DRP, which stands for Dividend Reinvestment Plan. And I do have a video on how to set this up and I'll leave a link down below if you're interested. This DRP feature allows you to automatically reinvest your cash dividends to buy new shares of the ETF. This is a great way to save on brokerage and obtain a small discount on the share price. And if you want to maximize the magic of compound interest, then you'll want to set your dividends to auto reinvest. All three funds include franking credits for a portion of their dividends. A franking credit is a unique tax credit in Australia paid by companies to their shareholders along with their dividend payments. This is a way to avoid a double tax since they already paid the tax on your behalf. With this tax credit, you may be able to reduce your tax return at the end of the year when completing your tax return. And there you have it friends. I hope this video helped you learn the difference between our three popular Aussie ETFs. In the end, I don't think you could go wrong with any of the three. The most important thing is to learn about investing and protecting the value of your money in the long term. Now I want to hear from you, so let me know down in the comments which one is your favorite ETF and I'll personally respond to each one. I do read all your comments and appreciate all your support, so thank you very much. Please give this video a like if you enjoyed it, as it does help my channel out a lot. And be sure to subscribe to my channel because I make a ton of personal finance videos like this and you don't want to miss them. In the meantime, check out these videos if you want to learn more. And until next time, my name is Brian and I hope you make a lot of money.